really great. I'm grateful to be here, and I have been learning about these processes for the past year, listening to a lot of recordings, and I think that one thing that I want to thank you for is giving me the understanding that I always knew but never had the words to express, which is um, aligning myself with my inner being. And That's what resonance is, isn't it? You can feel resonance. Yeah. It's amazing. And now having words to kind of align myself, that, that makes a lot more sense to me. Yeah. So I feel like um, I'm really good at steps one, of course. Um, I understand <laughs> two is not my business. Well, one is a good step. Let's not just throw that off like it's nothing. Step one matters a whole lot. That asking step, which takes contrast in order to do it, is what causes expansion. It's what eternalness is all about. So we're glad you're good at step one. <laughs> and then? And so uh, step two is not my business. Step three, I feel like I'm... Step two is your business only in the sense that you are wanting to resonate with what step two is yes yes in other There's words no step three is the intention to accomplish the resonance with whoever it is us doing step two yeah 100 percent. Right. so right now i'm feeling like i'm doing well at step three i'm knowing what i want knowing what i don't want i'm using my feelings and my emotions to kind of guide um, where I am. So you're I, sensitive to your feelings. Very. I've always been. Good. And I've always done something to make myself feel better if I didn't. I've always avoided things that make me feel bad. Like I've stopped watching the news and I'm an educator. And so it's really hard because I had this really, it, it's almost like you gave permission for me to understand limiting that because it wasn't making me feel good and being really aware of that. Yes. I'm not sure what step four and five are. I haven't Step really... four is just being really good at step three. Okay. Step four is just being so practiced at it that it just feels like second nature to you. Like and then you step are. five is being back in step one and not being mad at yourself. Giving yourself grace. Understanding the value of step one. Not giving yourself grace like, well, you're doing something wrong, but it's okay. No, you're doing something valuable. You're still focusing and you're still choosing and you're still sifting and sorting. Yeah. So four is more just being there consistently. Four is just mastering it. Four is really caring about that bag of marbles. Step four kicks in for most when you really get it, that you are responsible for your point of attraction and that nothing outside of you is going to do that work. You got to do it with your ego. Yeah, and it's difficult when you realize that. Like you said, it's yay that, you know, the universe yeah. is working for yeah. me, but, but also accepting that accountability yeah. and that responsibility. So yeah. You can call it accountability or responsibility. You can call it privilege. You can call it the way we would look at it is we have the freedom to explore that's why we want you to be nice to yourself about step one if you don't give yourself the freedom to explore you don't give yourself the freedom to choose and so the sensitivity that you feel you said I use my emotions and we want you to modify that expression a little bit I feel my emotions I understand my emotions I benefit from my emotions I am aware of my emotions I understand my emotions I'm able to modify my emotions and this is the big one that we're really laying on heavy here today I find relief from negative emotion not by looking for other humans to explain it but by calibrating to my inner being once you get that once you're no longer defending yourself to those who haven't collected the same data that you have or you're no longer justifying or arguing for your own limitation it's this feeling that humans have so often Esther talks to us about this a lot of feeling right I know I'm right I've collected enough data that I know I'm right about this it feels terrible I feel terrible but I know I'm right well when you feel terrible there's another question to ask when you feel terrible nothing is worth being right about that feels terrible there are a whole lot of things that you can be right about that you don't want to mess around with you don't want to attract them 
you could be right that that police officer should not be out trolling for money and looking for ways to earn revenue because you're not wearing your seatbelt. You could be perfectly right about that. You could have a council of your peers voting and they could all agree that that's just wrong. But we're just saying. <laughs> When you push against anything, no matter how right you are, you attract the very thing you don't want into your experience. So if you think that you're not only right, but that you are clever enough that you can change the way the whole world is interacting with itself, then stand on your righteousness and be sure that you're right while you sacrifice your alignment with your inner being because your inner being doesn't need to prove it's right. Yeah. It's not worth it. Your inner being knows it's love <laughs> and knows blessed and knows value and knows good and knows kind. Your inner being is not measuring itself or you or anyone else against anyone else. And when you get that, ah, oh, you really let yourself off the hook in a big way. Definitely. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I just wanted to share recently that I decided to move from waiting into for a relationship into just fully moving into this beautiful romance that I want to have. And I had I was in Sydney, Australia when you when Abraham did this really beautiful rampage for this guy who was talking about relationships. And I remember sitting there thinking wow, I didn't think I wanted a relationship until I heard Abraham describe it in such a way. I'm like, oh, wait, that's possible? I want that. And I've just been having fun living my life and working on my relationship with myself. But anyway, recently I had this insight when I was reaching for alignment with my meditation in the morning, which I do every day. And I'd heard this concept before, but I thought, well, can't I have fun like with Mr. Right now until Mr. Right comes along? But then I was like, no, I'm really ready. There's the Mr. Now, too. Yeah, and I've, I've had Mr. S some Mr. Nows, but I was like, I'm... <laughs> and I'm like, but I'm really like feeling the vibrational place of being in this beautiful, deep relationship, which is what I really want. So I've... So I've, you were awarenessing it. Yes, and so I've been, like, I was thinking about Esther... Abraham describing Esther going around saying, if, if the camera was following me wrong, around, everyone would think I was crazy because I've been going to get coffee and like pretending like I'm holding his hand and I've been, um, like I've just been fully moving into it, the reality of it and it feels, it doesn't, I don't feel the absence of it, I feel the like melted butter feeling of it. And so? So, I don't have any questions. And so? Oh, oh there he is. Right now. <laughs> I knew it On your back patio <laughs> That's the ring that happens when someone's on Esther's back patio He's on Esther's back patio oh. <laughs> Esther, hook me up This is when we like to say When you feel like that Can you step into a little bit of a feeling That it feels this good And for right now that is enough Oh yeah so if you really mean that and if you can stay there then it can't not because that's the vibrational frequency that the law of attraction gathers the cooperative components and because you are alert to it it'll be easy for you to connect those dots yeah that's the way yeah so I'm here to celebrate and so I don't really have a question I'm just having fun with it and I thought it'd be fun to do a celebratory ram preferably from Abraham I wasn't I could offer one, but... We're going to take this conversation into a bigger room. If you've ever been inside of a delicious relationship, it's easier to conjure one in your mind, but it can work against you because it being there and now not being there can work against you. So it's better, really, to think in terms of being in a fresh new place where you're not trying to replicate something or replace something you're not even trying to replace absence of something with something. So this is where getting the feeling of what co-creation really is. Now, co-creation happens all the time. You're co-creating now. You're co-creating with the people you were visiting with during this segment of refreshment. You're co-creating all day, every day with all kinds of different 
thoughts and ideas and memories and things that you're imagining and things that you want and things that are actually happening. And so co-creation is just something that you do all the time. But co-creation with an intention of causing awareness, it's co-creating with a purpose. What is the path of most allowance? What is it that you are allowing? We know you want to allow manifestations. We get that. We want you to want that. But what are you allowing pre-manifestation? Well, you already described it. You already described you're allowing good feelings and you're allowing expectation and you're allowing a feeling of adventure. You're allowing a heightened sense of awareness. You're allowing an appreciation of the law of attraction. You're allowing appreciation of your inner being. You're allowing an appreciation of yourself who has tuned yourself into an expectation that feels good. And so you want to kick that up to another level. Esther was having a conversation, not about relationship, but about the concept of more, 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 more. And she was thinking about how often she is satisfied. And then she thought, but is satisfied really enough? And she thought, oh, I haven't thought that before. I wonder if it's okay to think that. <laughs> because Abraham's been saying for a long time that when you have a desire and you're moving in the direction of it, you feel satisfied. So moving in the direction of it is one thing and you've been moving in the direction of it. But when you decide that you want to kick it up a notch, that you want to take it from satisfaction, so what is it about relationships that make it not enough for it to be in your mind, that make you, demand isn't the word that we like when you use it, but we're going to use it because we're demanding from a place of knowing. When you demand from a place of not knowing, then you're trying to use too much action. But when you demand from a place of knowing that what you're demanding or conjuring or expecting or asking for is your own focus, then what you're really talking about is taking it up a notch and then another notch and then another notch from satisfaction and just feeling good to what? being inside of a relationship really, 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 really feels like. To have a person who feels significant to you feel that way about you. Ooh, to get to be the object of someone else's attention when they are deliberately tuned in, tapped in, turned on. That's like bringing source energy and all of the resources of source energy right into this moment where there's an explosion or a synergy that makes you smarter, cuter, wiser, sexier, fuller, funner, richer. In other words, it makes everything more. When one of you is doing that, that's fine. But when you have someone else that you are focused on in that way, and they are focused back at you in that way, then that kicks it into a whole new level. And that level is what we call co-creating its best, but co-creating at its best with deliberate intent. So universe, I know that you know that I know about the law of attraction and I know that you know that I know about my vortex and I know that you know what's in there and I know that you know that I've been lining up, lining up, lining up and I know for sure that there are cooperative components that have been gathered on my behalf. And I know that there's no question on anybody's mind, law of attraction, I'm talking specifically to you, about what's most active in you because it's most active in me. I know what's active in me. And so it is my intention to just keep that part active because it just feels good. But to stand in a new level of expectation and really demanding of myself and of the universe to bring me real, live, tangible ex experience of someone adoring me while I'm adoring him. We think that kicked it up a notch. We think that kicked it up a notch. It takes waiting. That's out of the question because I'm ready now. I'm not giving you that option. I'm not giving myself that option. I'm not making excuses anymore about maybe I'm not ready or maybe he's not ready. There's no reason for any excuses. I'm clear. Law of attraction is clear. And so let the games begin. We were telling someone the other day not to order the universe around. And that may have sounded a little bit like we were encouraging him to order the universe around. It was different though, can you tell? You're not ordering the universe around. You've already made your requests. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next